Psalm 19 verse 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let us stand together and praise our God by singing hymn 120, O Happy Day.
Amen. Truly, today is a happy day, knowing that the Holy Spirit has come to our hearts as we celebrate and remember today is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. A blessed good morning to everyone, and why don't we extend the same good morning to each other, to our neighbors, by giving them a bow and telling them a blessed morning. Right now, let us open our blue prayer book to page one for the greeting. The Lord be with you. I was glad when they said to me, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. God is spirit. Praise be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to praise God by singing Gloria in Excelsis. The Lord be with you. As we remember the greatest commandment given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray the collect for today. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Scriptures. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 66, verses 10 to 16. You may open your pew Bibles to page 649. Verse 10. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you who love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn for her, that you may feed and be satisfied with the consolation of her bosom, that you may drink deeply and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, 
and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed. On her sides shall you be carried and be dandled on her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and his indignation to his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, the Lord will judge all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. The word of the Lord. The New Testament reading for today is taken from Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 to 30. You may turn your pew Bibles to page 1017. Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 to 30. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet, what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the proclamation of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is according to Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 12, and then verses 17 to 20. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, sack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter, and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, The very dust of your city which clings to us we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. 
But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in the, that day for Sodom than for that city. Verse 17. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Again, a very blessed morning to everyone. How are you today? It's good to see beautiful faces. I can see your smiles uh, through your eyes. Unfortunately, not through our masks, no. But uh, it's so nice to see everyone here today worshiping with us and gathering together as a church family. Uh, before we proceed with our message, why don't we prepare our hearts in prayer? Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and we just want to thank you for this opportunity to be here to worship you freely to hear from your word and to have to be in the company of fellow brothers and sisters in the lord father we pray that your spirit would fill us uh, especially as we hear your message for us today we pray that you will open our ears our minds and our hearts so that we may understand what you are trying to tell us and allow us to live it out in our lives this is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so brothers and sisters, welcome to a new month. And uh, we've been doing this for, we've been through the year for half a year already. And so I want to ask, how is your life now as a Christian? How are you right now uh, with your Christian life, with your faith life? Well, I was reading a report from Christianity Today on the 50 countries where it's hardest to follow Jesus in 2022. And based, uh, this is based on a survey done by an organization called Open Doors. Okay, so in 2020, uh, the report says that th there were about 13 Christians being killed every day worldwide because of their faith. Every day, 13 Christians lose their lives because of their faith. And then in, there, there's every day around 12 churches or Christian buildings are being attacked worldwide, okay, 12 churches or Christian buildings. And then last year, 2021, the number of martyrs worldwide has increased to 1,000 more. 1,000 Christians more are being killed, uh, have been killed in the past year. That's around 5,898 Christians killed because of their faith, not for any other reason, but simply because of their faith. That's, that's uh, 5,898 compared to the previous year, which was 4,761. Every day, around 12 Christians are being unjustly arrested or imprisoned, again, because of their faith. They, what, what is being done to them? They are being beheaded. They are abused, tortured. Those who are fortunate enough get driven away. They get to go to a different country where they can be safe. But a lot of them, they don't even have that choice. They stay where they are, living for their lives, and they can't even depend on the government to protect them. Because sometimes it's even the government who allows these things to happen to them. Hotspots include Afghanistan, Nigeria, North Korea, Pakistan, India, Myanmar, China, and many others, mostly in the Middle Eastern area, in Africa, and in Muslim or Communist Asian nations. But do you know what's remarkable? 
when you read the report, what's remarkable is that despite the dangers, the Christians there hang on to their faith. The very reason that they are killed was because they didn't want to let go of the faith that they have, the joy that they have as Christians. And they continue to gather together for encouragement. Open Doors actually has been making this survey since 2016. And yet, Christians in these parts keep up their faith. Numbers are still being added to their community. More people are still coming to know Christ and to follow Him as their, follow, yeah, follow him as their Lord and Savior. And many of them, even though they're hard-pressed, they still found enough joy in their relationship with Christ that they keep up their service, they keep up their faith, and they are willing to die for what they believe in. Now, isn't that something, brothers and sisters? Now, let's talk about us. How are we holding up as a follower of Christ and as a church here in our country? Have there been things that robbed you of your joy in following Christ in the past year? Maybe we don't experience the same things that our brothers and sisters in other parts of this world, what they're experiencing. But maybe something that happened during the pandemic has been trying to rob you of that joy, has been testing your faith. And how has it left you? Has it left you joyless or joyful as a Christian? In the past six months, we've been talking about how to shine forth as people of the kingdom. We've gone through the Sermon on the Mount and the parables. And what we realize from this is that uh, living as kingdom citizens comes with a lot of resistance. It comes with a lot of challenges from this dark and broken world. It comes with a lot of temptations that try to draw us away. And so this month, we want to reclaim and not lose sight of that genuine joy that we can have in Christ. We want to strengthen our, our people, our, our members, the believers in Christ, to keep going and to uh, not lose sight of this joy that we can have in Christ. We want to, like, again, like the early Christians and the present-day martyrs, we, we want to find that true joy that shines even in the darkest moments of our lives. We want to discover that joy that is not quenched no matter how dark the world may be, no matter how dark our experiences may be. And for that, this month we will be going through Paul's letter to the Philippians. So, uh, and the, the theme that we are striving for this uh, month is called Be Joyful. Okay, so we've, we've gone through Be Bright in January to March, and then Be Wise in April to June. And for this month, we want to talk about being joyful. And today we kick off this series by talking about being joyful in suffering, or how to shine in suffering. And that's precisely the question. How do we do that? How can we shine as Christians in the midst of suffering? And the answer to that is to be focused, to stay focused on our calling together. We want to learn to keep that joy up by staying focused on our calling together. Because suffering comes in all forms and sizes, right? It could be an attack from people around us, like the martyrs that we've just mentioned. It could be uh, a difficult situation that drains our energies and makes our responsibilities more difficult, like what we experienced during the pandemic, or maybe if we're going through a financial crisis right now. It, it's there to, to test our faith, to, to cause us to try and take away the faith that we have. And with all the difficulties that we've been facing, what we can learn from our passage from Philippians today, from Paul, is that we can still have joy amidst all of this suffering. So how can we do that? How can we keep on with our passion without feeling like giving up? Like giving up? Well, let's go to our first point. The, the first way that we can do this, as we learn from Paul, is that we have to stay focused on our calling in Christ Jesus. Stay focused on our calling to what God 
has called you to. Paul was very clear and focused on his calling. When we look at his story, okay, we, so, we see him saying in this passage that to live for him is Christ. To live is Christ. Last uh, Sunday, okay, last week, in our mid-year planning, this was a much-needed insight that was brought up. We saw how many of our church leaders, our servers, and even members felt so drained uh, during the pandemic. Many of us felt discouraged seeing how our numbers have declined compared to pre-pandemic times. And we have fought hard asking how we can keep up the ministry. So we came up with so many suggestions on how we can support them, how to support our leadership, how to encourage them. So uh, we came up with programs that uh, maybe we, uh, that we can help them to encourage, uh, to appreciate them, and how to ease up their load. But then one striking insight was brought up at that time, and that is the question, do we still realize our place of calling in the first place? Because if we know that we are where God calls us, then no amount of difficulty, no amount of hardship can and should stop us. If we know that what we are doing is something important, it is something good, then no matter how hard the task, we go through it, we do it. Just like students, we don't give up just because an exam is difficult, just because, just because it's hard to get that degree. When we try to feed our families just because it's so hard to work, we don't stop. Uh, we don't stop working. We keep at it because we know there's something good at the end, and what we're doing is something worthwhile. So in other words, whenever we encounter sufferings, if we are clear and focused with our calling, then instead of getting eaten up by them, we can move on. In other words, we ask ourselves all the time, what fuels our lives? What drives us to get up in the morning to keep fighting and doing what we do? We have to ask ourselves that. We have to ask, what, are you, what have you called me to do? And what are we called to do as Christians? Well, if I throw the question back at you, can you think about passages that talk about our calling as Christians? We've seen a lot of these already through our collect earlier, uh, and, and I think you can recall one or two verses okay, that talk about our calling. Maybe you will recall Jesus' invitation to take his yoke that is light, to carry our crosses, and to follow him. Maybe you are reminded by our gospel reading today where Jesus says that his desire is for laborers to go out to the harvest as lambs among wolves. And in Paul's own words in Philippians chapter 1, if we go back to nine, uh, verses 9 to 11, he says that we are to grow more and more in the knowledge and all discernment and to be filled with fruits of righteousness, the glory and praise of God. These things tell us that our most fundamental calling is this. It is to know and love Christ more and to help others know and love Him too. To enjoy God forever and to let others enjoy God too. And yet, again, we realize so many things are trying to take away our focus. Maybe feelings of ineffectiveness, opposition, demands from our day-to-day -day responsibilities, the temptations that the world keeps giving us. But must these shift our focus away from doing things that really matters in life? Again, going back, if you remember the parable that we discussed about the rich fool, we're not asking if you're doing things that make you happy, are you satisfied with life? But we're asking, are you doing things that really matter in life and in the next life? Must all of these 
temptations, all of these hardships rob us of the joy of fulfilling our calling, of seeing people have that same joy, peace, and hope that can be had in Christ Jesus alone. Let's take Paul's life as our encouragement. When we look at his life, it's much worse than us, right? At the time when he wrote this letter, he was in prison. And scholars even think that he wrote this at the time when he was possibly going to be executed already. He also said that his fellow countrymen, the Jews, they were persecuting him simply for preaching the gospel. He wasn't even trying to fight them. He was just preaching the gospel, and his countrymen were persecuting him. In verse 15, we also see fellow Christians who were competing with him, attacking him. Maybe they were jealous of his ministry. And yet, what do we find Paul doing? Did Paul focus on the bad things that were happening? Not quite. He did not, in this letter, we see he did not write the believers to say, oh, I'm so miserable, and I wish I was free from this responsibility. Instead, all he could talk about was how the gospel was spreading even through his chains. Did the challenges rob him of his joy? Not quite. Instead of being miserable, he was joyful because his eyes were fixed on his calling. To live is Christ rather than something else. If we look back in verse 18, Paul says his reason for living is that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this, I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice, will rejoice. Why does he say will rejoice? Because as much as there are so many things that will try to take his joy and his focus away, he was determined to rejoice in this alone, that Christ called him, that Christ is preached, and that God is using his life to bear fruit, to bring more people to enjoy God forever. Can you imagine what would happen if we all lost sight of our calling, thinking that life is all about pleasure, that it's all about fame, wealth, or power? Giving up becomes a real option, right? A very real option. Why would I be doing all these things when I can just enjoy the world? Burnout becomes a very real experience, and we get trapped in it. Going away and shifting our focus on pleasure, fame, or wealth, this is what it does. It will drive us further away to things that don't really matter. What we need to regain, to, what we need to regain joy is to be refreshed of our calling, to be focused on our calling. Sure, we can take a break, but if you must take a break, use the opportunity to spend time with God to be refreshed. Personally, and I think many of us can relate here, if we just go on vacations and have fun, no agenda, when we come home, we end up craving more for those vacations, right? But in my experience, in the, in the last few vacations that we've had, and we really took time to, to work on my devotions, to spend time with God, when you come home, you don't look for these vacations. You are recharged. You are excited to, to live for God and to continue with the ministry. Because that's the trick here. We need to be refreshed with our calling. We need to let God remind us why we do what we do. And we know that in the end of all this, we will experience joy that goes on to eternity, not joy that just lasts in this lifetime. So we know there have been many things that seek to take your joy away, our joy away. But brothers and sisters, are you still focused? Do you feel like giving up with your walk, with your growth, and in your service? Has the Christian life become more of a chore for you than a delight? 
Well, we need to ask, could it be because we are starting to lose sight of our wonderful calling in Christ Jesus? Are we trying to find joy in other things that won't really matter in the end? And I know it's difficult. I think we all know it's difficult to keep this up. And so what can we do to keep focused on our calling? What can we do so that we can still keep going in joy? This is the second thing. We are told to do it in community. We need to stay focused together, to stay in this community. Because being together, that is God's way for us to be reminded of the joy that we can get from our calling. Take a look at verses 27 to 30. Paul says we have to keep our conduct worthy of the gospel of Christ. But what does that look like? He says it looks like this. You stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. We need community if we are to keep up this joy and to stay focused on the wonderful calling that we have. And what kind of community are we building? Is it a community of making business connections or a community where we can be entertained with what we do or to just kill some spare time? No, we have a focus, the faith of the gospel. We are a community that makes every effort striving together so we can all stay focused on the wonderful gospel and our calling in Christ. When we do so, then we can expect to have a joy that lasts, a joy that can be found in Christ Jesus. So I, let me ask you, brothers and sisters, how are you with your fellow believers here, fellow brothers and sisters in this church? Look around you. How are you with the people sitting in front of you, beside you, behind you? We're not even asking how your ministry is going. But first of all, we're asking, how are you with the people you are sitting with right now? The people that you talk with over, over the week, uh, people in our church that you talk to over the week. In the two years of barely seeing each other, do you feel glad to be seeing each other again face to face? Over the course of our life as a church, we've seen people who have come and go, some people who have actively served in ministry before, only to disappear because they felt they were so burdened while serving. Unfortunately, some of them have opted to cut ties with the church, not just our church, but uh, church altogether. They don't even go to other churches. They secluded themselves from the community of faith. And how are they doing? Maybe we know some of these people, and we ask, how are they doing? Many are probably happy, or even they feel rested. But again, we are not asking whether they are happy or rested. But what we are asking is, are they satisfied for the right things? Is their joy based on something that will last through eternity? Or is it something that is only temporary in this world? But then on the other hand, I think it's so nice to hear about the stories of people who have joined our church or other churches. You often hear of how they found a community that helps them uh, make sense of life through, through God's eyes. For, for many, they, maybe you've heard of their stories, like how the small groups have helped them to make sense of the world that they've gone through, that, that they're going through and how in these communities they found shoulders to lean on and arms that help them to usher, usher them to God when they are faced with sickness, heartache, and grief. Maybe through the prayers we say week in and week out, prayers that were made by Christians that have gone before us, when we feel weak and we don't know how to pray, they have helped us to express our deepest desires, what's in our hearts. Maybe, and hopefully, through the messages and teachings in our church, we experience God speaking to you and reminding us of our calling. 
After months of not meeting face to face, it's also so beautiful to see people gathering around after the worship service, talking to each other, uh, smiles all around. And it's so nice to see small groups gathering again in our classrooms here around our compound. And I'm personally very encouraged to see even our elderly taking the effort to learn Zoom just to meet and to talk and to encourage and pray for one another. Because brothers and sisters, it is when we are together that we have the best potential to grow in our faith and in our relationship with God. Together, we can face our adversaries better. We can have more courage together. As Paul says, we can be not in any way terrified by our adversaries because we have each other to remind us of our salvation and our wonderful calling. So when you feel defeated or intimidated by the attacks of the adversaries, will you let the community help you? Will you stay with the community? Brothers and sisters, are there ways God may be calling you to let the community help you and you also to our community? Our pastors, we are always open. Our lines are open. Our offices are open okay, for, for, to listen to anyone, to, to help our members. We have over 80 small group leaders who can journey with us in our growth. 80 leaders who are trained to help us in a small group setting. We have our sanctuary and prayer meetings where we can just be in a safe space together, where we can just come before God, leave all of our cares behind and just leave it to God. And even our fellowships, they're about to resume face to face with YPF taking the first step later. They're, thankfully, they, they have the opportunity to start face to face later already. So many opportunities, brothers and sisters, to be in community and to learn about this very wonderful calling that we have, this very wonderful relationship that we can have in Christ Jesus. Won't you join and stay with us, brothers and sisters? Of course, our community may not be perfect. No community, in fact, is perfect. But what we have is a community that will seek God together to reclaim that joy that will matter through eternity. So in conclusion, I know th that we're tired and that when we're tired, this is the very opposite of what we want to hear. Maybe what we want to hear is, a, is message, our messages of rest and comfort rather than a message to say, go on, don't give up. Hopefully, in the past messages, you have heard about rest and comfort. And also in the days to come, in the weeks to come, I do hope that we can continue to give you these messages as well. But today, and also in every week, every day, let us also be reminded that what we need to go on more than anything is revival. What we need is a refreshed view of our calling and Paul tells us that we can best find it if we stay together in this community as we minister to one another in the sufferings and the hardships of life. So brothers and sisters, be joyful in suffering. How? By staying focused on our calling together, together. So the question I want to leave with everyone is, what can you do to be revived and to maintain this joy like Paul and so many martyrs have done or have experienced? What can you do to stay focused on your calling along with the church, with your family? So why don't we bow our heads? And maybe this is something that you want to ask God about. If you feel tired, just pour out your feelings to Him. But also ask Him to refresh you by reminding you of your calling 
and making clear to you where he wants to lead you, especially in partnership with our church. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this reminder from Philippians today on how we can shine even in suffering. Lord, there are so many things in this world that try to take us, to take away our, our, the good thing that we have found in you, the good things that we are experience, have experienced and can experience in you to draw us to things that won't give us true satisfaction, things that will only satisfy us for a while. Father, we pray that you would move through each and every Christian, not just our church, Father, but each and every Christian. Lord, help us to, stay fo to be focused, stay focused on our calling. Give us a community where we can grow in, we can be encouraged, and that we can hear from you clearly. Lord, help your church, all of us, to rise above the hardships of this world so that more people can enjoy your presence, more people can know about the hope that we have. Strengthen us, O oh Lord. Refresh us. Revive us. This is our earnest prayer. In Christ's name, amen. Praise the Lord for a reminder to stay focused on our calling together as a church family. Right now, why don't we all stand together and declare our faith using the Nicene Creed. With confidence, let us declare what we believe in. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, conceived by the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Since today is the first Sunday of July, we will be reciting our mission and vision statement. Church, what are we to do, to raise up generations of mature followers of Christ, to be salt and light in the world, who will love God, love others, and make disciples. Last week, we had our mid-year planning, and for now, or starting now, we will be reciting our vision this way. We changed the first part, uh, first words of it. What do we aim to be? To be a church that impacts our community through members who are diligent in making disciples wherever they are, rooted in the word, reverent in worship, and fervent in prayer. Let us now kneel together for the prayers of the people.
Father, as we have heard and witnessed from the message earlier how churches are being persecuted, Christians are being hurt and killed for their faith, Father, our prayer is that our faith would also be in the same way as them, that we would hold on to our faith until our last breath. But we continue to pray and unite our hearts, and we pray for those Christians all over the world who are being persecuted for what we believe in. Lord, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Father, grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Father, we pray for all those who are in full-time ministry, those people who have devoted their whole life serving you. Father, may you instill within our hearts that joy in serving you, and may we always draw strength from you, and may our love for you never fade. As we serve, as we become shepherds of your people. May you use us for your glory, humble us, and revive each of our hearts. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Father, we continue to uphold our country in our prayers, especially as we have inaugurated our president. Father, we pray that you would use him to bless people, to serve you, wholeheartedly to serve those who are in need and to relieve people of poverty, not only for him, but everyone who is under him. All government officials, may they have reverence and fear of you all the days of their life to always be accountable to you above all else. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Father, when we encounter crossroads in our life, whether we would do the right thing or whether we would do which is right in our own eyes, may we choose that which glorifies you. May we choose that which honors you above all. Lord, help us in every decision to give you all the glory and honor. Father, give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Father, we are in the reality of many people suffering from depression, mental illnesses, anxiety, and even physical illnesses like cancer and sicknesses that are hard to be cured. Father, we pray for them. We would like to remember them in our prayers that you be the one to comfort them. For you are our God who is sovereign. You are our God who is our great healer. Be with them, O Lord. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We praise you, Lord, for your saints who have entered into joy. Church family, let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us open our blue prayer book to page 7 for the confession. Let us be reminded of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 16. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let us pray the confession. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray you of your mercy. Forgive what we have been, amend what we are, direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us hear the assurance of our Lord and Lai Shu Siong Te Siya Ben. So, and Diyang Siong Te Si Un Ho Din, Tia Tio Lan Tzu Ya So Ki Tok, Siya Ben Din So Hwa Ne Tzu E, Ke Thin Din Kya Ho E Lat Diyong, Yang Siang Diyang E Tai Diyang, O Siu Din Chin Dip Yang Wa. Amen. As we continue in prayer, let us pray the prayer of humble access. Together, most merciful Lord, we do not trust in our own merits to come to your table, but in your boundless grace. You have invited us to come to the table of the kingdom of heaven. Help us to partake of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may evermore live in him and he in us. Amen. Let us now stand for the peace, also found in our Blue Prayer Book, page 9. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us exchange peace with one another. Please be seated as we have our offertory. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Let us now with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life to the Lord. And while the offerings are being collected, we will be singing hymn 158, entitled, Jesus, Thou Joy of Loving Heart. Let's all rise.
now proceed with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And the of the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give and grace. it is indeed right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Shall we kneel and pray? Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us in your image. And when we fell into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for all mankind to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, with confidence, we proclaim together the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. All honor and glory is yours alone, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with lots of thanksgiving.
Let us now kneel and pray. Shall we say together the post-communion prayer? Let's pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us receive the blessing. Guan Xiong Te So Su Tsut Lang Igua E Piang An Po Xiu Din E Sim Huai I Diam Ho Din Hiao Tit Kiang Ai Xiong Te Kap Ye Xiang Kia An E Kiu Tzu Ya So Ki Tok Go Guan Zuan Ding E Xiong Te Xiang Pe Xiang Kia Xiang Ding Su Hok Ho Din Tit Kao Ying Wan Amen Please be seated. We are glad and joyful to present to you our construction committee. They have a presentation of Hall A and B. Right now, we will be calling the representative of construction committee, Christian Hia. Yes. Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. With great excitement and thanksgiving, I'm here to announce that the renovation project of HJ Way, third floor, which is where YPF and Zion Fellowship uh, used to held our fellowships, has finally been completed and ready to use for our fellowships starting today. Other than the aesthetic improvements, we also have new meeting rooms, a common lobby, and a new toilet to serve the needs of the different ministries of our church. This renovation is a story of God's goodness and faithfulness to our church. Despite of the pandemic, we were able to start and finish the project within the budget. So now please turn your attention to the screen as we show you pictures of the new and improved third floor of HJ Way building. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your head. From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God also like to acknowledge the valuable contribution of Sister Erika Ang as the interior designer of this project. She has graciously shared her time and professional skills with the help of our church staff, Emily and Jeff, to make sure that this project will be completed according to the vision set by our pastors and vestry. Lastly, after this worship service, YPF will start their face-to-face -face fellowship in Hall A while Zion will have our face-to-face -face fellowship on August 14 in Hall B. So to celebrate this important milestone, Reverend Justin and the fellowship officers, leaders, will proceed to H.J. Way third floor for a special blessing and prayer. Thank you, and to God be all the glory.
Thank you, Brother Christian. Also, uh, later, right after the blessing, we will be having our YPF face-to-face -face fellowship, while Joy Fellowship will be having their face-to-face -face uh, fellowship next week, July 10. Let us continue to uphold everyone in our prayers. Another announcement. We are sad to inform everyone that one of our church members, Sister Carolyn Wei Hong, joined our Creator last Saturday, June 25. She passed away peacefully of old age. She's also the sister of Emmeline Chiu. And let us continue to pray for comfort and peace for the bereaved family. We hope that our worship to the Lord this morning has been pleasing in His sight. Let us continue to stay in our calling, to stay focused on our calling together as the, mention had, as the message has mentioned earlier. Right now, let us stand together and sing our closing song entitled, Trusting Jesus, That Is All. <laughs> 